In early May of 2005, 59-year-old John Donovan was heading north on the Pacific Crest Trail up Mount San Jacinto. Located in Southern California, the surrounding area largely consists of dry desert, but the higher up you climb, the harsher and colder the climate gets. On his climb up, Donovan was already encountering deep snow and the worst was yet to come because a heavy storm was on the way. By the time he reached 8,000 feet in elevation, he needed help and tried to follow two Canadian hikers who were in front of him who were much more experienced in the harsh conditions than he was. About a half mile south of Saddle Junction, the Canadian hikers made note that John was still behind them. One of the trails at this junction leads down into town and into safety. However, Donovan never made it into town. He never made it into safety and he was never seen again. Searches were unsuccessful and it seemed like Donovan's time was up. He had 59 years of life to leave his mark on the world and he certainly did just that. However, though his life may have been over, it would turn out that Donovan would have one more chance to leave his mark on the world and help out some hikers who were in dire need. This is the tragic yet incredible story of John Donovan. This is an interesting one, folks. It's sad and it's scary, but there is a positive twist at the end of this story, one that's very unique among the stories that I've covered on this channel. So I hope that you'll stick around through the entire video, and I also hope that you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to get this channel to 200,000 subscribers. That's my next goal, and I would appreciate it if you would help me get there if you enjoy this kind of content. And with that said, let's get into the story. John Donovan spent most of his life living on the East Coast and ended up joining the Navy where he spent 15 years serving his country. By the time he was in his 40s, he had taken up hiking as a hobby to lose weight and to spend more time outside. He ended up becoming very involved with the hiking community and joined the Old Dominion chapter of the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, which is a group in Virginia dedicated to recreation and conservation of the Appalachian Trail in that area. It's through this group that he ended up meeting one of his best friends, 60-year-old Ken Baker. Baker and Donovan would go on to complete roughly 100 backpacking trips together and each man became a very accomplished hiker. John Donovan would go on to hike the 500 mile Colorado Trail and completed the entire Appalachian Trail in section hikes over the course of a decade. It's no surprise that after all this experience, the next goal that Donovan decided to take on was a through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail, which runs border to border through California, Oregon, and Washington State. John Donovan was originally planning to hike the PCT with his friend Ken Baker since the two had spent so much time hiking together over the years. However, in the spring of 2005, as the two were getting ready to set out on their through hike, Baker decided that their original April start date should be postponed a few weeks due to unsafe snow conditions. Donovan, however, disagreed and insisted on sticking to the original plan. This worried Baker because Donovan had been known to get lost from time to time when hiking. Donovan had spent a year planning his through hike of the PCT and he did not want to wait a few extra weeks for the snow to melt. Ken Baker was quoted saying, I'd look at the weather data and Southern California had just had its snowiest winter in 30 or 40 years. When Baker confronted Donovan with this reality, Donovan's response was something along the lines of, quote, the crowds up ahead will blaze a trail through the snow. I'll be all right. And thus towards the end of April in 2005, John Donovan retired and he set out from the Mexican border hiking north towards Canada. He ended up starting the PCT with a different friend actually named Lynn Paget, who had hiked the Appalachian Trail in 1997. However, Paget was no longer in hiking shape and ended up leaving the PCT near the town of Warner Springs, only about roughly a hundred miles into the through hike. And so after that, Donovan continued on all by himself. Less than 50 miles later, he started the long climb up Mount San Jacinto, which is the first large mountain that northbound PCT hikers will climb. Though the PCT itself doesn't go all the way to the summit, it does climb up the majority of the mountain, reaching over 9,000 feet in elevation. It was now May 2nd, 2005, and though the desert floor thousands of feet below him was certainly starting to warm up, the opposite was happening on San Jacinto. There was still at least three feet of snow left in the higher elevations and 
more was on the way. On the night of May 2nd, John Donovan camped near two other hikers who were both from Canada, and during their conversations, he had apparently rubbed them the wrong way, though I don't think it was like a full-on fight or anything. They just got a weird vibe from him, it sounds like. The hikers camped out that night, and then the next day, John Donovan began climbing Fuller Ridge, which is a steep and technical part of the trail that requires special equipment such as crampons and an ice axe in snowy conditions. He began climbing shortly before the storm hit, and he was even warned about the conditions up ahead by some hikers who were coming down the ridge. One of these hikers was quoted saying, we weren't going to change his mind. He was emphatic about going up Fuller Ridge. Donovan was carrying spikes for his feet, but he was not carrying an ice axe. It's speculated that he may have not been carrying it because he wanted to save weight in his pack, which is a very common thing that PCT and other through hikers want to do, though I can't say for sure that this was his reasoning. By 1 p.m., it appears that John Donovan had finally realized that he had made a big mistake. He had descended off the ridge down into Little Taquitz Valley and was having a very difficult time seeing the trail, which was now hidden underneath the snow. It's at this point that he ran into the two Canadian hikers he had camped with the previous night. Donovan decided that his best chance at survival was to try and tag along with these two hikers who both had more experience at altitude and had better snow equipment than he did. Donovan stayed about 30 feet behind these two hikers and apparently fell repeatedly. He was trying to use his crampons, but they didn't fit well with his lightweight trail running shoes. One of these Canadian hikers was quoted saying, he was having a hard time, but he seemed healthy and it seemed to me that he was going to hike up Fuller Ridge if he wanted to. I remember thinking, he's an adult. I won't tell him what to do. Eventually, the group of hikers came within roughly a half mile of Saddle Junction. I remember Saddle Junction from my Pacific Crest Trail hike. This is a major trail intersection with a bailout point that leads a few miles down into the town of Idlewild, California. I don't know this for a fact, I'm speculating here, but I think what John Donovan probably wanted to do was get to this junction and then take that trail, I believe it's called the Devil's Slide Trail, down into Idlewild and down into safety. But unfortunately, this would never happen because shortly before they reached Saddle Junction, Donovan became separated from the other hikers and they would not make contact with him again. So at this point, things were looking pretty dire for John Donovan but actually his situation was even worse than what I've described so far. John Donovan never married and he never had any kids. He didn't really keep in close contact with his family members and so the only people that even really knew he was on the PCT were a few friends preoccupied with their lives back home. These friends were helping him with supplies but they weren't keeping close tabs on him and his location. And because of this, 12 days went by before anybody realized that John Donovan was missing. 12 whole days that search and rescue could have been looking for him and potentially saved his life. A friend did eventually realize that something was wrong when Donovan failed to pick up a few of his resupply boxes north of San Jacinto. Search parties were eventually sent out looking for him, but they found nothing and eventually the search was called off. After Donovan lost sight of the two hikers he was following, he tried to change course and head west off the ridge towards Idlewild. He was close to Saddle Junction, but he couldn't find the trail that led down into town and eventually switched his plan, this time opting to head east towards the town of Palm Springs. He climbed three miles down from the ridge towards Palm Springs and eventually stopped for the day in Long Valley. At this point, it appears as though Donovan was either too weak to move on from the campsite or he had just simply decided to stay put in that location and wait for rescue. So there he remained stuck and he started to turn his attention towards his survival. He tried to build signal fires, but he couldn't get anything going due to all the snow on the ground. He also tried flashing a mirror at the sky to try to get the attention of somebody in a helicopter or something, but unfortunately that didn't work either. He was running out of food, having only 12 cheese crackers left by May 5th. And honestly, not that much is known about what happened after this point. But on May 14th, Donovan wrote in his journal, quote, goodbye, 
and love you all. Though Donovan did not have close ties with his family, he was thoroughly missed by all his friends. He may have been a little rough around the edges, but Donovan had a big heart. He had done social work at a hospital in Petersburg, Virginia, taking disabled and sick patients on field trips. Another social worker that knew him was quoted saying, he'd lug these patients around all by himself. He'd lift them into the hospital van one by one. One of Donovan's friends had also recalled how Donovan had been there to comfort him after his wife wife had unfortunately passed away. Quote, he listened, he helped me see a way out. He offered a breath of fresh air when I needed it the most. And yet another friend recalled how Donovan had helped him recover from trauma related to some abuse that he had suffered as a child. Clearly Donovan was a great caring person and Donovan actually believed that his life's mission, his purpose if you will, was to help others. And he lived his life in this way and then as it turns out, Donovan continued this mission even after he had passed away all alone in the Southern California wilderness. That may sound confusing, but I promise you that sentence will make sense as we get to the next part of this story. On May 6th, 2006, almost exactly one year after John Donovan went missing, two tourists that had recently started dating took a trip to Palm Springs, California. 28-year-old Brandon Day and 24-year-old Gina Allen were both from Dallas, Texas, and decided to leave their town and head up the Palm Springs Aerial Tramway. The tramway climbed up to around 8,500 feet in elevation and provides access to some mountaintop restaurants and other amenities. It's a great way for visitors to experience the high elevation mountains without having to actually hike themselves up there. However, Day and Alan did feel like hiking a little bit and they actually set out on the 1.5 mile desert view trail which loops around the area near the tramway. While on their hike, the couple heard the sound of a waterfall off in the distance a little bit off the trail and so they decided to to leave the path that they were following and scramble off the trail to try and go and find this waterfall. However, when they turned around and tried to get back on the established trail, they could not find it. They heard voices in the distance and tried to walk towards the voices, but eventually realized that they were hearing echoes. They continued to try to find their way out, but only managed to hike themselves deeper and deeper into the wilderness. By nightfall, the couple was still lost and did not have the proper clothing or equipment to be spending the night above 7,000 feet in elevation. And so they settled in, hoping that the rangers would show up at some point during the night with their flashlights to rescue them. But the rangers never came. And in the morning, the couple climbed further up San Jacinto, hoping that being at a higher elevation would help them be seen easier from the sky. But this plan didn't work. They saw nobody, and nobody saw them. Due to the cold temperatures higher in elevation, they decided to head back down. They changed course and descended deep into the Long Valley. You'll recall, this is the same valley that John Donovan descended into one year earlier. Two more days went by, and then at some point during the scramble down, Brandon Day spotted a yellow backpack. Initially, this filled the couple with hope, but that hope was quickly dashed when they read the date on the journal that they found inside the backpack. Brandon Day was quoted saying, the entry was dated May 8th, 2005, exactly a year before. It sank in that someone had died there. They may not have known it at the time, but the couple had just accidentally stumbled upon the campsite of a man whose life mission was to help others. And even though he had long since passed at this point, John Donovan would end up doing exactly that for the lost and desperate couple. Inside John Donovan's discarded pack, Day and Alan found roughly 20 matches which were kept safe and dry inside a plastic bag. When they found the matches, they wasted no time at all and immediately tried to start a signal fire. And a helicopter actually flew over the couple, but as is unfortunately so often the case in these lost hiker stories, the occupants of the helicopter didn't spot the stranded couple. It looked like they would have to spend yet another night out in the cold. But fortunately for the couple, this third night spent sleeping in the wilderness with no extra clothing, no gear, and no extra food 
would ultimately be their last night. On the morning of May 9th, 2006, the couple made use of John Donovan's matches once again, and this time lit a much bigger fire. Day told Allen, quote, if we're going out, we're going out swinging. The flames of this fire grew up to 20 feet in height, and before they knew it, half an acre was burning. There was no way this fire wasn't going to be noticed, and sure enough, shortly after this, a helicopter arrived overhead. The couple was saved. They were rescued, and in the process, they had inadvertently solved the mystery of what had happened to John Donovan. A few weeks later, rescuers returned to the scene to recover Donovan's gear and his body. They found him wrapped in his tarp near a stream about 50 yards down from where Day and Alan had discovered his backpack. Which sounds kind of bizarre, and to this day, we really don't know what exactly led to him being in that final resting place in that state. But what we do know with certainty is that even in his death, John Donovan was helping people. I don't think it's right to say that this story has a happy ending. I think we would all prefer that John Donovan was still alive today, but at least something positive came out of it. If you're planning a hike on the PCT or really any trail for that matter, please be mindful of the weather, train with the proper equipment needed for tricky snowy conditions, and carry a satellite GPS with an SOS button. I'll have a link to a few popular ones in the description. Please keep John Donovan and his story in your thoughts Thoughts, and thank you so much for watching. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I appreciate that very much. If you're the kind of person that watches to the end of a lot of my videos or even all of my videos, I humbly ask you to consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It's only a few dollars a month. You'll get a little bit of bonus content. You're essentially buying me a beer every month. I think that's a good way to think about it. And it is a great way, I would say the best way to support my content. Everybody who's already on there, I appreciate you all so, so much. You know who you are. I know who you are. I genuinely, it's it's amazing. Thank you very much. Patreon.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking if you want to check it out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.